Welcome, sweet friends, to the channel Frugal Money Saver. My name is Emmy. My husband is Paul. Happy St. Patrick's Day. I've got my green on. We've got a party at my brother's house tomorrow, and we're all geared up. Like we have told you in the past, any holiday, any kind of celebration, Paul and I, we're all over it. We love it. It's just a little way to break up the mundane and have a good time, get together with those we love, friends and family, and make it special. Our video today is going to be super fun. We're going to share a bunch of tips and hints and reminders with you on how to save money. But again, it's going to have that old fashioned flair to it. It's gonna be reminiscent of days gone by because Paul and I are finding that number one, we are doing more and more of these old timey tips and hints for today because they're basically good common sense and they save us a ton of money. And you all seem to really enjoy these type of videos. So we just continue to share our lives with you in that capacity. So and we're also going to share with you a great springtime dessert Perfect for St. Patrick's Day, Easter, really any time. So let's get right to today's video. Does anyone remember green stamps or plaid stamps? This is a picture of them here. And I remember my mom did both the green stamps and the plaid stamps. And what was the purpose of these stamps? Well, starting back in the 1930s here in the US, they were used by retailers to generate business for themselves. They would lure you in and promise you green stamps for how much money you spent. So let's say it was 10 green stamps for every dollar. And then you would get this little book and you would put the stamps in this little book and you would save these stamps to get a free present. This shows you some of the items you could get. Everything from home goods to sporting goods, whatever interests you. Gas station offered stamps. Grocers offered stamps, hardware stores. They would say, come to our store, we'll give you these stamps, and you can save them up and get all these wonderful gifts. And people loved that. They loved it. Why? Because they were getting something for free. Would that work in today's society, do you think? We spend our money so casually. We spend it wherever we want. There's a lot of instant gratification when it comes to spending money. And the thought of us having to save a bunch of stamps in a book for a set of drinking glasses or maybe TV trays just kind of seems silly to us, I would think. We would just go to Walmart or we would go to Target or whatever and just buy them. Think basically what it comes down to is when people shopped in the past, they were shopping for needs and not wants. And one way to lure you into a store was to give you your wants for free as you were buying your needs. So as you were buying your gasoline, as you were buying your food, as you were buying hammers and nails to build, they would give you your wants, the frivolous extras. And I think that is such a neat philosophy. And honestly, we have lost that. But how can we gain it back? If you do want something frivolous or extra, how about saving up for it instead of just impulsively buying it on credit? Let's say you have your eye on a new set of dishes. Well, by taking maybe a couple dollars every week and putting it in a cash envelope until you have that money saved, to buy that set of dishes. Is that such a silly idea? No. I think we'd all appreciate our want purchases a little bit more if we actually saved up, waited for them, and were patient, just as our parents and grandparents did with those green stamps. Another one I think we should try to implement again is to start creating occasions. And what do I mean by occasions? And how would that possibly save us money? 
Paul's parents, his mom's going to be 90 this month and his dad is 92. Every day at three o'clock, the both of them sit down with a cup of tea and a cookie or a cracker or a small sandwich, a little jelly and toast and just sit and talk about the day. They may talk about memories they have shared in the past. Whatever it is, it's lighthearted, it's fun, and it's something they do every day. It is their little occasion. And I think today we kind of lose sight of those occasions, those special moments that can become traditions if we let them. And they also take our frugal mundane life and make it a little bit special. So I'm talking that Saturday morning pancake breakfast. Instead of going out to breakfast, we're all gonna stay in and make a delicious Saturday morning breakfast. Friday night, date night in the house, the occasion of just being with your partner or someone you love or even by yourself. Your own company is wonderful. Make it a special Friday night. Get a little charcuterie board going. Pick an old movie or a modern movie but know that every Friday night, you have this special night to look forward to. Make a special dessert. Sundays, the old fashioned family dinners where you all sit together. More and more people are bringing back the Sunday afternoon big meal tradition. It helps us save money because it brings contentment in our home. It helps us to avoid going out and spending and it just gives us a feeling of a very full and rich life when we start celebrating the small occasions. Technology can't replace these little celebrations we have throughout the week. And that fullness and joy that we have, what a wonderful way to celebrate the mundane and the everyday. Another fun and frugal thing that you can do to save yourself some money is revisit and read some of the books that were your absolute favorites when you were a child or a teenager. I have the original set of Little House books that my parents got me. I guess they were probably back in the 70s, I'm thinking. I still have it, and let me tell you, I revisit these and I read them. What were your favorite books when you were younger? Pull them out if you still have them. If you don't, look them up in your library. See if you can grab a copy. Read them. Read them with your children. Read them with your grandchildren. Another great pastime is reading out loud as a family. I love when Paul reads to me. I can't tell you. And when my son was younger, we would pull the classics out. I mean, there were just books all the time. And that is something, again, that is fun, it's frugal, it's free, you can do it in the home. And another part that you can add to that is how about revisiting some of your favorite music when you were younger. My first concert, gonna date myself, are you ready? The Bay City Rollers. Does anybody remember the Bay City Rollers? Pull up some of that old music, listen to it, revisit it. My goodness, what a fun Friday night that would make. So listen to some old music, pull out some old books, and just relax and be present in the moment. Here's another one I'm gonna share with you. What happened to good old fashioned manners? Well, Emmy, how can manners save us money? Believe me, they can. When you call someone on the phone to get a better price on something, to negotiate a price on something, the kinder, the gentler, and the sweeter you are, the odds are that discount will be much easier to acquire than if you came on assertive on the phone. When you're at a flea market or a tag sale and you wish to negotiate a price, be kind, be gentle. Remember please and thank you. If you are bringing back an item that you found defective and you don't have a receipt or it's past the warranty date, by speaking nicely, by being kind, odds are the person on the other end is going to be much more receptive. Overall, common courtesy will get you so far in life. These are just common courtesies that seem to have gone the way of the roadside almost. 
bring it back. I know this is just a simple reminder and I would guarantee you 99% of you remember to do this because I wouldn't expect anything else from you all. But remember, a kind word spoken can gain you a lot. Another tip going back in time, when people celebrated holidays, even like Easter, Christmas, birthdays, there weren't the plethora of gifts that we have today. There was usually one gift exchanged, if that, or maybe a couple of small things. But today, when you see a child's birthday party or Christmas time or even Easter, the gifts are just in abundance, candy and presents and all kinds of wonderful blessings our children, our grandchildren can receive. I want to just share something with you that Paul and I did when our son was younger. And this worked out wonderfully. When our son had a birthday party and kids would come over and he'd get presents, there were so many at the time that we would take just two or three of them and put them away for him. Down the road a couple weeks, we would pull a new one out and say, do you remember this from your birthday? Or at Easter time from his aunts and uncles and grandmas and grandpas, he would have this basket filled with candy. We would take some of it and put it away. And then down the line, we would bring some of it out and it would be like, oh, a whole new holiday over again. So we hope some of these tips just brought a smile to your face, got your creative ideas flowing on how to save money by looking back at how they did things in the past. We are so blessed and we say this on every old time, old fashioned video we do. It is amazing the wealth of information we have available at our fingertips, the TVs, the phones, all the electronics, and they are beyond wonderful. There's something equally special about those simpler times and simpler ways and just getting back to basics that can balance out our hectic busy days with the simpler gentler times. Now we're going to get into the kitchen and we are going to make a delicious springtime dessert. So let's turn this camera around and get into the kitchen. Are you ready to make a yummy refreshing key lime pie? Tomorrow, as we said earlier, we're going to my brother's for a St. Patrick's Day party. And one of the items we're bringing is a homemade key lime pie. So these are the ingredients you're going to need. One graham cracker crust, but we're going to make our own because it actually came out to be cheaper and we'll still have a ton of graham crackers left over. You'll need one package of graham crackers, one stick of butter melted, and about a quarter cup of sugar. The recipe did call for a third cup, but I knocked it down to a quarter. Two cans of sweetened condensed milk, half a cup of sour cream. We need three quarter cup of lime juice. I just picked these limes. My store did not carry key limes. So I realize this isn't a true key lime pie at this point. I think these are just your basic limes, but I think they're gonna be fine. So that's all there is, super, super easy. So let's get to work by making our crust first. We crushed the graham crackers. I just put them in a plastic bag and rolled over them with a rolling pin a bunch of times and they came out perfect. Now I'm gonna add our quarter cup of sugar and the one stick of melted butter and I let it cool slightly. And now we're going to just incorporate this all together. And this is gonna be our crust. And now I have a nine inch pie plate here and I'm gonna take our crust ingredients and just put it in the pan. Then I'm gonna use the best kitchen tools I have and that's my clean hands. <laughs> and I'm just gonna press this down and up the sides of the plate. Our crust ingredients are all spread out in the pie plate evenly and now what we're going to do is just set it aside for a moment. To get the most juice out of a lime or any kind of citrus fruit like this, 
what you want to do is take it out a little bit ahead of time so it comes to room temperature, just an hour or so. And as you can see what Paul's doing, he's rolling the limes with pressure and that will break up the fibers and we'll get the most juice out of these little limes. So we thoroughly washed the limes and now we're going to cut them in half and get as much juice as we can out of each of them. We just put a strainer over the measuring cup and we're going to start juicing. I have to say these limes were incredibly juicy. Three and a half limes gave us three quarters of a cup of pure lime juice. Paul bought me this little zester. It is the best little invention, honestly. What we just did was we zested about a teaspoon of that lime zest. Look at that. So now we're gonna make our filling. We've got two cans of sweetened condensed milk. Buy these when they are on sale. Sweetened condensed milk is expensive. You can also make your own. The holidays are coming now. We have Easter coming up and these type of items go on sale and you're going to want to get them and put them away. Baking ingredients, Christmas time and Easter time always come down in price. So that's when we get them and we can put them away for future use. And we're going to add our half a cup of sour cream, our three quarter cup of lime juice. And I'm just going to gently whisk this together. And I'm also going to add the zest that we zested before Add that in as well. And now we're just gonna mix this all together. Just gonna pour our filling into our crust. We're going to bake it in a 350 degree preheated oven for about eight to 10 minutes until there are little bubbles popping on the top. checked this at eight minutes and there were no little bubbles and then I checked it at 10 minutes and I still don't see little bubbles so I am pulling it out because I don't want to overcook it either. So this looks delicious. It smells amazing. You can see that the center looks soft but it definitely is set up. So we're going to let this cool on a wire rack and then we're going to promptly refrigerate it as soon as it's cooled in about an hour. After the pie had cooled for about an hour on a wire rack, we put it in the refrigerator to cool completely. So now we're going to decorate it because it's several hours later. I took some heavy cream and I whipped it with a little bit of powdered sugar. And now I'm just piping little stars around the edge. First step is done. And then I have a very thin slice of lime. I'm gonna cut several of these, twist them, and I'm gonna lay them down on top. I don't wanna do that till we're ready to actually serve the pie because I'm afraid the acid in the lime might break apart the cream. The pie now will go back into the refrigerator and it must be kept refrigerated. And then we'll show you on Tuesday's video what it looks like right before we present it and what everyone thought about it. We're not going to be able to share that yumminess with you in this video, but come back on Tuesday. We're going to take you along to my brother's house. We're going to share a little bit of our St. Patrick's celebration, show you the food, show you the fun, and we'll tell you what everyone thinks about our key lime pie. Today's question of the day is a challenge slash question. What kind of small occasions do you celebrate during the week? What is something that you do on a weekly or daily basis that is part of your routine that makes your day a little special? And if you don't have one, I want you to think of one. Saturday morning breakfast, Friday night movie night, something fun that could break up your week, make it frugal, 
make it exciting, make it different, your special little occasion and share what it is with us. I think it will not only encourage our viewers, but I know it will encourage Paul and I. We thank you again so much for sharing this time with us. We ask that you give this video a big thumbs up. It helps us so much. Please subscribe if you haven't. Don't forget your comment. Enjoy your St. Patrick's Day weekend. Let us know what you're doing. We ask you to be well. We ask you to stay safe. And above all, we wish you blessings. Until our next video, may God bless you greatly.